everyone and welcome back to my heavenly babies i am angel and today is thankful thursday and for thankful thursday joining me is my look-alike son dylan i'm starting over in the rotation with the babies and it just so happened that my look-alike son baby came up for thankful thursday i am thankful for each and every one of my babies but especially this one here that looks so much like my son, and I got him at such a good price. He was on Cosdal off of eBay, and yeah, I just couldn't believe, you know, to find a baby looking so much like your child at such a fraction of the price. You know, it's hard. You got to pay people to do, um, you know, to make a baby look like your own child, and this one looks so much like my son. He is a full-body silicone open eye baby and it looks just like his photograph when he was born that's what i love the eyes are perfect uh the redness of his skin he was a very red baby i'm the one that did all of his art and painting on him i got him unpainted um but yeah he was a very red baby because he was born premature but he was a pretty big baby and this baby is just ounces shy of what he was and um he was like 19 and 3 fourth inches long and i think this baby is um, just a little over 18 inches. So this baby is pretty much the size my son was when he was born. So it just all worked out so great. And we're going to do a spotlight on him, get him into a cute outfit for the last summer look. And uh, yeah, we'll have some fun. First, we're going to start with God. As always, we're going to read our Billy Graham wisdom for each day while Dylan looks up at that ring light. He seems pretty happy and pretty content. Today we are on September 20th. And it's called Like the Tossing Sea. The wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mirror and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Isaiah 57, 20 through 21. You probably knew people who, I'm sorry, you probably know people who are like this. You may have been one of them yourself. They have no stability in their lives and are constantly pursuing one goal after another, one relationship after another, one pleasure after another, yet they never find the happiness they seek. The reason, they have left God out of their lives and without him, they have no purpose or direction or no um, eliminate, or let's, I'm sorry, have no purpose or direction and no um, ultimate sense of right and wrong. A life without God is like a boat without an anchor. Boy, isn't that true, you guys. I don't know how anybody lives without God. But God didn't intend for our lives to be this way. And when we come to know Christ, he brings calm to our chaos and direction to our drifting. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight. But as we learn to live by the principles he has given us in his word, we leave the past behind and discover the peace he alone can give. Thank God for doing this in your life and pray for your friends who do not know Christ that they may find in him the stability and peace they seek. Wow, I really like this one, you guys. I like all these ones I read. But they all are just so great for like just the day, how God can talk to you through verses and all that. And I love how he's speaking here, how none of us can live truly happy without God. You really can't. And I don't know how people do. And they're not. They're not living. Like it says here, you really are not living. If you don't have God, you will not have the direction in your life that you truly need. So it's important to lean on God, to give yourself to God, to trust, you know, without seeing that Jesus walked this earth and died for us so we could have eternal life and that there is a heaven, there is a hell and I'm so sad for the people that don't believe because one day when they are, you know, their life is up and they are in hell because there's only two places to go. And if you don't believe, you won't make it to heaven. It says right in the Bible that you have to believe um, and have your salvation and that they're going to be there. And once they're there, I know that they're going to be screaming out. It talks about it, that they're going to be screaming out for help. And it's too late then. It's just too late. So, you know what? Like I always say, if I'm wrong, which I'm not, but if I'm wrong, what happens? You go under the ground and that's it, right? But if I'm right, and I am right, you have so much to lose. Hell is for eternity, burning for eternity. Burn your finger right now with a lighter, just real quick, and tell me how it feels. Imagine doing that for eternity. So if, you know, if I was wrong, then, then again, you have nothing to lose. But if I'm right, and I am, why would you ever want to risk that and just say, well, I'm just going to take a chance. I know I'm going under the ground. There is no God, and that's that. And 
that's really taking a big risk, you guys. It really is. I mean, just read the Bible. The Bible alone will show you how real God is and you'll feel him in your life, especially when you're having down days. You'll, you know, you'll feel God right there with you, especially when you lean to him and pray. He's right there. He wants to hear from you and he wants you to talk to him. It's a very scary thing to know that if you're not walking with God, you have no direction, no purpose, no sense of right and wrong. You just don't. Um, it says a life without God is like a boat without an anchor. You know, if you don't have that anchor to anchor you down, and that's what God does, he anchors you down. If you don't have that anchor to anchor you down, you're just going to keep floating around. You're never going to be able to stop, right? But if you get anchored with God and he anchors you down and you have him in your life, you're going to have that stability, uh, you know, direction, sense of right and wrong. You're going to know what to do and you're not going to just be floating all over. You're going to be anchored and you're going to know exactly, you know, what you need to do. We'll learn and grow each day that we go on and each day that we're reading the scriptures. We learn every day. We, you know, I've read through the Bible five times and I still learn all the time. I'll never know everything before God takes me home, but I'm doing the best that I can as a Christian. I live in a glass house like all of you. I am not perfect. By all means, I make mistakes. We're human and it's human nature for us to sin. That's why God had to come up with a plan to send his son to die for us. A man that was sinless is the only one that could take on those sins for us to be forgiven. What a wonderful ultimate gift. And I, you know, been reading those to you guys lately. But give yourself over to God today. Get your salvation today. Write it down. Know that on September 20th, you know where you are going. You are heaven bound, heaven bound. And know that we're going to make mistakes, but don't ever get, you know, fearful of that. Pray, ask for forgiveness, and just keep living the best that you possibly can, as Christ-like as we can, you know. Don't show off. Don't, you know, be a different person around people when you, you know, when you're around them versus when you're at home. When I read these verses, I don't want people to think I'm this false prophet, that I'm like this awesome person. And then all of a sudden these people meet me behind closed doors and like, what kind of a Christian is she? I want to be the same person I am when I read these to you guys. But let every man, let every woman be a liar. Let God's word be the truth. It is the truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We cannot get to his father without going through him, knowing what he did for us. So the wisdom for today is no amount of worldly power or... Uh, prestige can bring about the peace we desperately seek. Lord, true peace um, seek. Lord, true peace is found only through a relationship with you and knowing that by placing our faith in you, you are future. Um, I'm sorry, let me read that last line. And knowing that by placing our faith in you, our future is secure. Boy, see what I just said? It's secure. You can know 100% where you are going. When your time is up, you can know that you're going to heaven. You can be secure with that and you can live a much better life. But here on earth, this isn't our permanent home. So it's not supposed to be perfect. This is where all the disaster and famine and diseases and sicknesses and hurt and pain and anguish and death and, you know, people against people and, you know, um, plagues and sicknesses. And, you know, it's just everything is here because we live in a sinful infested world every one of us sin and we make it so bad but when we get to heaven one day it's all done it's all over with so this is not our permanent home if you are a christian your permanent home is in heaven and remember that so just live and be as happy as you can here on earth when you have bad days lean on god and there's a lot of times we have to let go and let god let god take over the situation in your life if it's too overwhelming for you i hope you enjoyed that on like the tossing sea and like I always say, start your day, go through your day, and end your day with Life's Manual, the Holy Bible. Let's get some reading in, you guys, even if it's just a verse a day. Read the Bible. Get close to the Lord. Get a personal relationship with Jesus, for he died for us. And that's the least we can do. And read his word. Like I said, even if you just open it up and you read a Proverbs of the day, you know, one verse a day. God sees that you're trying, and he's going to help you. I'm doing that one-year challenge. I'm just behind by two days. I was, I was all caught up, and then I got a little bit behind, but I'm only behind, well, actually one and a half, because if I read today, it's, you know, I'm not really behind today yet. But I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get the reading done. I'm loving doing this. I've read the Bible through five times, um, but I want to do it again and again and again, because I learn and grow every time I read, and I love the Bible. If you have a Bible and you've had it sitting in a drawer or on a table forever, blow that dust off and open it up and read it. Read it. You're going to love it. If you want, start with the Old Testament. If you don't like the New, I mean the New Testament. If you don't like the Old Testament because it seems weird to you, start with the New and then get to the Old. However you want to read it, God doesn't care. Start in any book you want. But read, 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 read. And the best is to start with Proverbs. Read a Proverbs of the day. It matches the day of the week. There's 31. So if there's 31 days, you read all 31 you start over. If there's 30, you read 30 and start over. If there's 28, you read, you start over. 
if you know what I'm saying. And you just keep reading. It's the wisdom chapter. You know, it's the wisdom book. So read every day a um, chapter for that day, you know, that day. And that's where you can get your starting of reading. That'll get you on the path of reading and get you into a habit of it. All right, you guys. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and now focus on my beautiful Dylan. Let me tell you what I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for all my babies. I'm thankful I'm still here. I'm thankful that my uh, real son is doing so good, uh, working so hard at his job. He might get to the position of being the manager of the whole store. He is a manager right now. And I'm just so proud of him. I'm so such a proud mom. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. He loves God. He's been with the same girl for almost five years. He loves his mother. He worships me. Uh, loves me so much. It does what the Bible says to honor thy mother and father. He does honor me very much. Loves me very much. We are best friends. Um, he's been calling me every day to see how I'm doing because I've been, you know, dealing with this hysterectomy and having a hard day. My son calls me daily, even though he works and has a girlfriend and all that. He makes time for his mother and he calls to see how I'm doing. And it's just awesome. I love him. I am a very proud mom to call him my son. And I was happy to get a baby that looks like him since I missed out on a lot of the newborn stage with him as I developed a heart condition when I first had him. But you know what? I prayed, asked God to keep my heart and my body because I was put on a heart transplant list. Uh, my heart was very bad, uh, but God kept it in there. I still have it. 25 years later, my heart's still in my body. So God heard me and answered my prayer. Now, does he answer every prayer? Sometimes he says yes, no, or not now. So we just got to, you know, understand there's a reason why. And I am just thankful that I'm still here. I'm thankful I'm conquering every day. Thankful I'm a Christian and I have my salvation. That's my biggest one. I'm going to heaven. And that my son also has his salvation and he's going to heaven. That's a good thing to know that your children are. So steer your children in the right direction to help them to know the Lord as well. And I'm thankful my mom's still here. And I'm thankful for my friends, my new friends, uh, my old friends, all the people on this channel. I'm just thankful, 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 thankful for everything. For a roof, food, clothes, and a bed. All those things are not just given to us on a silver platter. We need to be thankful for them. All right. Let me show you what I'm putting on Dylan. This cute little outfit. Now, I get clothes for all the babies. I always do box openings, and there's outfits with each baby, but they all share. So okay. he's going to wear this navy blue outfit here. Normally, I put on, like, Nike or some kind of a, a name brand outfit for him. But I also do regular clothes on him, too. So this is a Carter's. I do believe I got this from Target. Or was this Walmart? This was Walmart, you guys. Paid 14 bucks for this. So it's a little um, pair of shorts done in a tan. And it's got, um, gosh, did I? No, I didn't because this is brand new. I think I was going to do this one and I didn't. Um, but anyways, it's got sailboats on it. It's got, like, they're all going to the, the lake or the, the ocean to um, do some uh, skiing or uh, what is it? Uh, wave boarding. And it's got the palm trees, it's got the little crabs, the um, van with the, you know, the, um, gosh, I can't think clear here, the uh, board, surfing board on top. And it's done in that beautiful cream. And um, it's got the uh, buttons here that are just a imitation of the tiger eye. Uh, that's like the, the uh, gemstone, the tiger eye on, you know, the, the little straps here. And there, and I love that there's two, and it looks like it's going to fit him great. This is a size uh, small, or small, a size newborn. And it comes with the navy blue uh, collared shirt because, again, I dress him in, you know, really name brand stuff. Or kind of like, he's almost like my little preppy baby, too. So, because my son always dresses so nice, always did, and I dressed him really nice as a baby, too. So, we're going to put that on him. We're going to do these socks because they're like a cream color. So, we'll do this sock and these cute little shoes. I figured that'd be cute. It reminded me of a surfer, just you know, driving along in their uh, their little van and, and they've got those type of shoes on. And then I'm just going to put this cream hat because he is bald right now. Eventually he will have hair. I did paint him, but he needs hair. And I'm doing all the rooting through the fall and the winter. Um, but anyways, so he's going to wear this. It's just a little hat that went with the Winnie the Pooh. I had a couple of outfits that matched because um, I got a couple of the babies some. So he's going to wear that. And then, of course, he's got the cream nook. He's not a nook baby. Never was. Um, every once in a while I could get him to take it, but he's not a nookie baby, you know, but we just put it in for fun. And here's his ducky. This was his favorite when he was a baby. Not this particular one. He had a rubber ducky he played with in the bath and it was this big, um, a great big one. It wasn't like the little tiny one. So it, he was not this size, um, when he got it, he was like a year old when he got his, but I just like to have it. And it was pretty much the size, maybe a little bit bigger. And it was a squeezy ducky, made the squeak noises and all that. And I thought, oh, how cool. I had the little one for him, the little blue one, but it was a yellow duck, and I thought, this is perfect because it's a stuffed animal, and then he can hug it. So let me take your ducky, buddy, and then we're going to turn you, and we're going to go ahead and put this behind you here, 
and make sure that you are in a frame. Yep, okay, he's in frame. And we need to get this hot outfit off of you, right? Look at how pretty he is. He's a nice red baby because that's what color he was when he was born. My Isaiah is red too. I had them do the, uh, Kimberly do red on him. Uh, the newborn red because I love that color and my son was that color. He was premature, so he was really red. So yeah, those newborn preemie babies, you know, a lot of them can be red. And I did him in that color tone that he was when he was born. Everybody said he looked like a little Indian. They said he was so pretty. And I did two babies. One of my friend has the other one. Um, and when it wasn't working out and I was getting ready to just toss that baby, I got another one, this one here, and um, got this one all done and or got the other one fixed and by that time this one couldn't go back for return so I ended up just selling it to her and she named hers Christian uh, but hers is just a little bit more red than mine and I sometimes think maybe I want to do this a little bit more red maybe just a little bit more red tone I know on here uh, iPhones pick up more red than what they truly are um, that's kind of picking up though it looks like it is picking up pretty much the color he is so it's spruce throughout red, but I, I think I want to do a little bit more. That's the Motley, so I think I want to do a little bit more red tone to him, and I might. I might go ahead and do a little bit more. But anyways, there's his little mole. My son had a mole when he was, uh, well, still to this day he does. I have one on the bottom of my foot. It's the opposite foot as his, but we both have a mole. It's really cute. He's got his on his, this would be the right leg, and I have mine on the left. Yep, mine's on the left. I just looked. I don't know if I could show you guys. My feet might be a little bit dirty, but there's mine right there. I hope you guys can see that. My feet might be a little bit dirty, but you see I got a mole? Well, my son has one too, and he has it on the opposite foot as me, so I had to add that in there, and it was darker, of course, when he was a baby, and then it lightens up. But yeah, so we did. That's the only thing my son really had. He didn't have birthmarks or anything. I have a birthmark on my arm, but that's all he had was the little mole on him. But um, yeah. He was a beautiful red little Indian color baby, and he was just gorgeous. I was afraid. I thought they burned him under that lamp. Because, of course, when they first lay the baby on you, he's all full of the uh, fluid and stuff from being inside of you and all of that. So you can't tell how red they are. And then, of course, he was a preemie, so they had to take him right away, put him under the lamp. Well, they have to do all that anyways, clean him up, do all that, and uh, warm him up under the lamp because he was a, a preemie. And um, when they brought him back to me, I, like, freaked out. And I'm like, what is wrong with him? Did you burn him? I'm like, did that light burn my baby? Like, and they started laughing. The nurse started laughing. She goes, no, that's the color of his skin. He's a preemie. So, um, but they said newborn, preemie and newborns are, you know, can be born with that red skin. And he was just so red. But after that, oh my gosh, I got the compliments on my baby. He was so pretty. And of course, the way Isaiah is, that's how I want this one to be. So just a little bit more red. He is a great red. It's not like I have to fix him. Because he, of course, started to lose the red as he got older. But this is supposed to represent him as a newborn, you know. So I might um, just go over him just a little bit more. After I get all the babies done, I might go over him a little bit more. Just add one more shade of the red over him. And then um, uh, seal him up again. But he's so soft, I use that silicone velvet. Um, I would have, I'm going to show you guys. I don't think I showed it yet, but I might have. I've got a baby I'm working on and um, that somebody requested for this baby and I'm working on it and um in there I show you or gonna show you guys um the supplies I use so you know I know you guys trust me but I I use very expensive silicone paints I go through Fuse FX and they're very expensive paints and um the seals I use silicone velvet and that's very expensive as well and I seal them I double seal my baby so first I seal it with the sealant without the powder and then I seal it again while it's wet and I seal it with the silicone um, velvet. So I let it dry first, that layer on both sides. I do one side and then the other side, and then I do it again. And while it's wet, that's when I do the powder finish to mat the babies. And my babies are soft. Uh, even Michelle, she would have got um, this version, like I said, from me. And I'm going to ask her, um, or if she watches this video, Michelle, tell me, is he's still soft, isn't he? And do you have to powder your Christian? I don't think you do. Um, most people that have these babies are telling me that they don't have to powder them. And I'm getting uh, so far, about a year out of them and still haven't had to powder any of the ones that I've done with silicone velvet, uh, even the, the, the ones that, you know, are a year old is what I'm saying. I still have not had to powder them. So, oh my goodness, we're supposed to do a spotlight. <laughs> uh, well, I kind of told you a little bit that he was a preemie baby. Oh, I don't think these have to be untied. I was trying to untie them. Um, but anyways, my son was a very, 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 very 
good baby, even for a preemie. But one thing is he could not stand it when it was time to eat. He, you know, I could not wait for that microwave. Like he, I mean, obviously he was a baby, so he didn't know any better. But he, eh. oh, their little tongues got back. But he, um, yeah, like I'd be making it and he would be screaming his little head off and it's so late at night and I didn't want it to wake everybody up. I was living at home then with my parents. Uh, his dad wasn't involved. I've kind of already told the story. Um, but I was at home with him and he would scream and scream and scream and, and he'd want it. And But he would only take an ounce, you guys, an ounce. That's all this little guy took because he was a preemie. That's why he only took an ounce. Um, but anyways... Uh, he would just scream his little head off. And I remember one night uh, I was so, uh, you know, so upset because, well, not upset, but just tired, wore out. Oh, my goodness, you look cute. Mwah. You look just like Dylan. That's why your name is Dylan. Um, but anyways, uh, I was just, you know, exhausted because he was getting me up on the hour every hour because he was only taking an ounce. So he was, you know, he'd get hungry again. And so he'd wake me up again. And I was getting pretty exhausted, but I was also developing that heart condition, you guys. The heart was getting worse and I didn't know it. So I was just very wore out and very tired. And my mom offered to help, but I just said, no, he's my baby. I got to take care of him. I got to do it. Excuse me. I'm his mother. I got to do it. So I was doing the best I could and he was waking me up. And I just remember one night I looked over at him. I said, oh, come on, Dylan, look, the bottle's right there. It's heating. <laughs> but then afterwards I realized, you know, I just looked at him. I said, oh my gosh, it's heating in the microwave. Can you not see that? And it's funny. I mean, he's three days old, you guys, four days old. Maybe a week old at that time when I said it. I was, it was probably about a week because I was just exhausted. Getting me up every hour on the hour. And finally, my mom said, Angel, put a little bit of cereal in the bottle. Like literally a teaspoon. I said, won't that hurt him? He's a baby. She goes, Angel, I have four kids. No, it won't hurt him. Put one teaspoon in there and he'll stay fuller longer. And that first time I did that, he slept for six hours. I kept waking up thinking, did I kill him from that? I was so scared. And um, after that, oh yeah, we put cereal in every bottle so mommy could get rest because that filled his little belly because he would only take an ounce. But that really filled him up. Look at how cute he looks, you guys. Aw, so precious and cute. So that's his last summer look for the year. And when it comes back around for him, um, he'll be wearing a fall outfit then because it'll be at least three, three and a half, four weeks before you see him again because I've got 33 babies to go through. So, but he was a good baby. Other than that, waking me up every hour, he was a very good baby. Like I said, never took a nook. He loved just hearing us talk. And that must have been because when I was pregnant with him, I talked a lot, they told me. And, you know, there was always somebody talking in my family. And so he loves the talking. I'm a big talker, you guys. And so he loved hearing me talk. He was passive. He was sweet. Uh, but when mommy ended up in the hospital, my mom had a rough time with him. He needed me. She had to bring him in a couple times just to lay him on my chest because he needed mommy. And he wasn't happy at home without me, so that was sad. But he was, you know, my best friend. I wanted a boy so bad um, for my first baby. I wanted five kids, but I said, please let my first baby be a boy. That's what I want. And I just knew I was having a boy. My mom kept saying, no, it's a girl. They told me at five months that they said, I think it's a girl. And I said, no, it's a boy. And I think it was just because of the way he was turned. They just said, you know, possibly could be a girl. My mom said, see, I told you it's a girl. And she kept buying me girls. So I said, no, it's a boy. I just knew it, even though as, uh, you know, most you think moms would want a girl. I wanted a boy. I'm a boy mom and I wanted a boy. And especially now knowing that I could only have the one, I'm so glad I had a son. I have a relationship with him like no other relationship. And moms and sons can get those bonds, you know, and we have a really beautiful relationship and I'm so happy for that. But he was a good baby other than waking me up all the time. But once that cereal came in, he slept so long and he was just passive and quiet. And as long as he got his food, he was a very happy baby. He was like that. He would just sit and stare and Listen to you talk, and he loved it. He loved hearing people talk and loved his mama. Boy, he loved his mama, especially as a baby. Like I said, he had to be, my mom was coming down the hallway of the hospital, and I could hear him crying. She goes, I got to bring him in. He needs you. So, because it had been like three days since I'd been home, and he needed his mama. The second she laid him on my belly, he looked up at me and stopped crying. I knew right there I had to fight for my life because this little boy needed me. I had to fight. I knew it. I mean, I was fighting anyways, but I knew how hard I had to fight because this little boy needed me. He didn't have his daddy. He needed his mommy. I love you. Let's blow everybody a kiss. Say, I love God. I really love my mommy and daddy. I love all my aunties, uncles, grandmas, and grandpas out there. Grandma and grandpas out there. And all my cousins out there. I want to just tell everyone I love them. And I love you guys. But remember that God loves you more and he is just begging for you to put him into your life because it's so hard to live a life without him. There's no purpose and no 
reason without God. There just isn't. You're just anchored there. I mean, you're just a boat without an anchor. You need to be anchored. So get right today with God. I am not pushing this on anybody. I say these things for myself to stay close to God, but I hope that I can save a soul out there. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing Dylan, and it'll be a while before you see him again. Um, but uh, he says goodbye to everyone. Yeah, he says bye. He says, I'm a good baby. I always was. Yes, he was. And this is the size he was as a preemie, you guys. That's just unbelievable. I had him almost a month early, and he was that big. He would have been huge if I would have went full term. <laughs> Um, but anyways, everybody take care. God bless. And I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload.